Welcome everybody. I can see all of you logging in to this live webinar like we do every Thursday and thank you for logging in. Uh, I am Gustavo Tolosa. I'm in Dallas, Texas and I'm the webinar host for Dr. McDougall and uh, his guests that we have from time to time. And of course today is a very special day because we have the um, new medical director at the McDougall program and his name is Anthony Lim and he lives in Santa Rosa, California and not only is he a, a wonderful physician, a board certified family physician, but he is also an attorney and he uh, has studied at the Stanford University where he got a degree in human biology and then he went on to Harvard Law School uh, where he received his law degree and then his medical degree is from Boston University. So we have to be careful with <laughs> Dr. Lim because we have here an attorney. Uh, but Dr. Lim is a wonderful, I had the chance to meet him in Santa Rosa and spend time with him. He's just a very kind, kind and compassionate uh, person, but he's also a firm, uh, can be firm when he's a physician and he has to tell you what, what is good for you and what you should be doing for your health. And um, so we're very excited to have him here today and I want to welcome him, give him a, a special welcome since this is the first but hopefully not last webinar that he does here for um, Dr. McDougall. How are you, Dr. Lim? Hi, Gustavo. I'm great. Thank you so much. This is very <laughs> exciting for me. It my, is exciting. First it? webinar. Very good. Very good. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what, how you got there and, and how it's been like to work there with Dr. McDougall. Oh, it's, it's been an, a, an incredible ride and journey. Um, when I first came on to work with Dr. McDougall uh, and Dr. Goldhammer here at True North, I had uh, been working part-time at Kaiser uh, Permanente, which is a large integrated healthcare maintenance organization. And I was leading their plant-based eating class that meets once a month. Um, it was started by a cardiologist named uh, Dr. Sanford Warren. And when he retired, I, I picked up where he left off and uh, co lead the class with a nutritionist, Melanie Larson. And um, when I heard of the opportunity to, to work for both Dr. McDougall and, and uh, Dr. Goldhammer, who I highly respected and admired and had heard both of them speak, I thought it was too good to be true. Um, but I, I applied and uh, they accepted me and the rest is history. So since August of 2015, uh, I've been working as the medical director at the McDougal program. Uh, we've already done uh, quite a few programs together. I've had the opportunity to witness the uh, miraculous results up front and, um, and personally, uh, and just uh, see how well patients do uh, eating a starch-based diet. Uh, and then here at True North, right now I'm talking from you here at my office at True North. Um, I've also had the opportunity to see the benefits of water fasting and eating a, a plant-based uh, diet that's uh, salt, oil, sugar-free. So um, I, I have told patients that sometimes I feel like I hit the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's how fortunate I feel to work with. Uh, it is very fortunate. You have a guest there in your office, don't you? <laughs> I do. Can I you? Do. If, can you Shall I, shall I show the show the world my guests? Oh yeah, we, we they they have to know. Can't. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> what a sweetie. So this is uh. Can you see him? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can see yeah. perfectly. So that's Balto. He's uh, the newest member of the <laughs> family. Um, I, I'm happily married with my uh, uh, wife of almost 13 years, uh, who I met in college, and we have two young kids, uh, Joshua and Julia, who are eight and four years old. And now we've, uh, just as of two months ago, recently adopted a poodle mix uh, from the local Roner Park shelter. His name is Balto. Oh. <laughs> uh, he comes to work with me on the days that, that my wife, Jean, also works. And, uh, 
he we just saw we saw three patients this morning together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. That's good. It's been a nice, a wonderful addition to to our family. Yes. Well, Dr. Lim, we are, of course, the, today we do have a topic and I know that people have many, 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 many questions. We will have other webinars, hopefully, with you. Um, today, we're focusing on uh, something that, of course, interests everyone, which is weight loss and how calorie density is sort of the secret to this. Uh, and. Uh, we're excited to hear what you have to say, and then we have some questions for you. So uh, would you like to get started? Would you like to say anything else? No, absolutely. Um, I, you know, this question or my interest in this issue came up uh, when I had seen a number of patients that would, that would essentially come to me and say, Dr. Lim, I swear I'm eating 100% you know, plant-based and despite that, I continue to struggle to lose weight. In fact, I'm gaining weight. Um, and they, they say, I'm not, I'm not deviating at all. I'm not having any dairy. I'm not having any meat. Um, I'm not having any eggs. I'm not adding oil to my food. And through, some com through conversations with Dr. McDougall uh, and especially with Jeff Novick, who wasn't necessarily the originator of the concept of uh, cal caloric density, but has really taken that concept and fleshed it out, uh, made it very accessible to thousands of people now who have benefited. Um, he really uh, sort of taught me the, the importance of caloric density uh, as one of the major reasons why people who are eating plant-based are having difficulty losing weight. So uh, my gratitude and thanks to him. And I see my role as taking this concept and really just uh, spreading it and um, making it as understandable as possible to, to the people I meet. So when we talk about uh, caloric density, essentially it's the n amount of calories in a given weight of food. And for purposes uh, of our, you know, for the purposes that we use, we generally say calories per pound. And the interesting thing about caloric density is how much it can vary. So if we look at vegetables, for example, let's just take broccoli. The caloric density of broccoli is about 100 calories per pound. Okay. Uh, and then that ranges all the way up to the high end of oil. Olive oil. It doesn't matter if it's olive oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, 4,000 calories per pound. And then you have everything in between. So when we think of the core plant-based foods, We've got vegetables, you know, green, green leafy vegetables, which are generally around on average about 100, calo 100 to 200 calories per pound. We have fruit, so your strawberries, your watermelon, that's around 300 on average calories per pound. Um, then you've got your whole grains, your starchy vegetables, that's about 500 calories per pound. Um, that would include things like corn, quinoa, your steel cut oatmeal millet, barley, um, and then last you have your legumes, you know, beans, peas, lentils, that's around 600 calories per pound, okay? Now what's interesting about those numbers is that the World Cancer Research uh, Fund and American Institute of Cancer Research, in 2007, they put out a big report looking at cancer prevention. And their number one recommendation was to eat you know, to, for me, was to maintain a healthy body weight, primarily through a plant-based diet that is low in animal products. And they actually recommended an average uh, caloric density of roughly 600 calories per pound. So it was, I think it was 567 to be exact, but let's just say about 600 calories per pound. So if you notice all those foods I just mentioned, your vegetables, your fruits, your whole grains, your starchy vegetables, and your legumes fall at or below 600 calories per pound. So then that leaves the question, what falls, you know, or what, what is higher than that? Um, and as we move up the categories, you've got your uh, process, your ne the next category you're going to have is meat. So meat is around, you know, 1,000, 1,100 calories per pound. That's your pork, your chicken, your beef. Even higher than that, is processed carbs and dried fruit. 
so your processed carbs would be things like cereals um, for, you know, it could be, you know, anything, even uh, shredded, shredded mini wheats without, without the sugar. That's still going to be uh, around 12, 1300 calories per pound. Um, so processed, processed carbs, uh, including bread, cereals, dried fruit, let's just say on average, that's about 1400 calories per pound. The next category would be uh, simple sugars. So table sugar, honey, maple syrup, uh, that on average is about 1500 calories per pound. And then our junk food, so Oreos, M&Ms, um, that one you're, now you're in the 2000 range, so around 22, 2300 calories per pound. Uh, nuts and seeds, 2800 calories per pound. And then, and then oil, 4,000 calories per pound. So what, if you do a detailed inventory of what people who say they're eating 100% plant-based are actually eating, you find a lot of times that some of these categories that I mentioned that, that are above 600 calories per pound, they're eating from those a lot. So um, they're eating a lot of processed carbs, uh, a lot of cereals, a lot of breads, um, a lot of dried fruits. Uh, they're eating a lot of packaged, processed, um, vegan foods. A lot of them are having more than just a handful of nuts and seeds. They're, you know, they're, Costco now sells the big bins of, uh, uh, of almonds, cashews, um, and they may sit down at the television uh, just sort of eating them mindlessly thinking that, well, I know not, I've heard that nuts and seeds are healthy for me, so I can eat as much as I want. And that, that's the danger. So to bring this home, and let's see if this works, Gustavo, I wanted to just show you uh, some pictures. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's see. Yes, we'll wait until you have it up here. Oh, okay, uh, we can see that, yes. Okay, so, well, first, so the, the benefits of eating from lower cal caloric density, so the bean, you know, the vegetables, the fruits, um, the whole grains, the lentils. It's simple. It's a simple approach to weight loss. You don't need to count calories, grams of fat. You don't have to weigh your food. You know, we generally eat the same amount of food by weight daily, anywhere from like you know two to four pounds, uh, three two to four pounds. So you know, you don't have to be so calorie weight conscious. Um, and the, the beautiful paradox is that although it's low in calorie caloric density, these foods are very high in nutrient density. So they're a great source of fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and phytonutrients. In contrast, the foods that are high in caloric density, your processed foods, your, um, uh, your meats, your nuts, your, your, your seeds, they're not as high in these vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. Um, and then last, the low caloric density foods lead to increased satiety. So that physical feeling of being full and satisfied. And that's, a, that's by virtue of the fact that they're really high in fiber and water uh, and nutrient content. Um, and adding fat, sugar, and refined carbs increases the caloric density, but does not correspond to an increase in satiety. So let's just take a look at some pictures. So let's say you want a 200 calorie snack. You could either, this is for non-plant based, based people, they, they might go to McDonald's, they could have four chicken McNuggets or not one, but two huge bowls of lentil soup. Now, which one do you think is going to fill you up more? The lentil soup, right? And which one's going to have more nutrients and uh, fiber? The lentil soup. Can you hear me, Gustavo? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yes. And you're, seeing it, you're seeing the pictures fine, right? We have seen everything. Yeah, great. great. So uh, let's say we're now doing a mid-afternoon snack, 140 calories. You could have two Fig Newtons. Um, and I put these on purpose because I remember during the whole low-fat phase of the 80s, uh, I was a huge fan of non-fat Fig Newtons. And I remember thinking if fat's the only enemy, then I could have as many of these as I want. And so I would, uh, I, I distinctly remember buying packages of them and eating, you know, eight to 10 at a time. So in this case, we're talking about two Fig Newtons or an entire cantaloupe for 140 calories. 500 calories. I could go to the movie theater and get a package of uh, gummy bears 
five ounce bag of gummy, gummy bears, or I could get a, eat a seven pound watermelon. Clearly the watermelon is gonna provide me more nutrient, more satiety, I'm gonna feel fuller. Now 800 calories, this is now we're talking more on the order of a meal here. Uh, I could have uh, one cup of cashews, you know, cup three to four ounces, or not one, not two, not three, not four, but five baked potatoes. And I put that on purpose because again, people who are whole food plant-based, you could eat nuts and seeds and, and, and say you're, you're uh, plant-based, but as you can see, that is how caloric dense they are, that one cup would equal five potatoes. And then of course the problem in America is not, um, is that we turn something beautiful like this plain baked potato and we do this to it, you know, the cheese, the bacon. This one I put on purpose because of people who eat a lot of dried fruit, um, you know, raisins, apricots, dates uh, is a common one. So you can have 10 dried apricots for about 100 grams and 275 calories or 16 entire apricots weighing about 35 grams each. So just to, you know, come back to this, the factors that decrease caloric density, ironically, increase satiety with a high water content, high fiber content. Uh, now the whole, the bulk volume is, is much, is much more uh, elevated. This was just what I talked about with the uh, report that came out of around 600 calories per pound. So, you know, sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. And I think those pictures tell a compelling story of caloric density and uh, how much more full you get with the foods that fall below that 600 calorie per pound line. Um, Dr. Uh, I, sorry, Jeff Novick, he, um, he cited a study, the Hawaiian study that was uh, put out by Dr. Shintani. Um, and I thought, I thought the findings in this were super interesting. Basically, Dr. Shintani, he looked at 29 Hawaiians over a period of 21 days. Uh, and they were on basically the standard American diet um, before he came. And his intervention was to put them on an ad libitum, so meaning they could eat as much as they wanted, uh, low fat, high complex carb, uh, whole food plant-based diet. And it came out to about 7% fat, 78% carbs. Their, their total caloric intake dropped despite eating as much food as they wanted from these lower caloric density foods. Their total caloric in intake dropped from an average of 2,600 calories per day to 16, uh, 1,600 calories per day. And during that, those 21 days, they lost an average of 22 pounds. Um, they had a 15% average drop in their cholesterol. Their blood pressure dropped by on average 12 uh, systolic points, nine diastolic points. And just because this, the results were so compelling, they, they wanted to make sure they were accurate and did a repeat study a few late, years later with similar results. So, you know, the literature also supports uh, again and again um, how critical a concept caloric density is. Just this morning, hot off the press, I was on with a patient who um, I, I'd seen here at True North. And she had spent, you know, almost two months here. And I got the exact same thing. You know, Dr. Lim, I'm trying to eat healthy, but I'm struggling to lose weight. She had done really well during her time here. Uh, but, but when she left, she came into issues. And what I've been doing is I've just been doing food logs with her. And at our last visit, we had committed to her doing breakfast you know, of all the meals, like really focusing in on breakfast. Uh, and so I talked with her today and here's sort of some of the things that show the caloric density concept that she, she hadn't fully grasped it. Uh, she was drinking orange juice. Uh, she was having uh, 
hummus with vegetables on lavash bread, okay? The hummus was not no oil hummus. So now you take those 4,000 calorie per pound oil, you put it into that hummus and you have completely changed the nature of that hummus. The lavash bread, seemingly healthy, and it's not that it's unhealthy, but again, much more calorically dense than having steel cut oatmeal. She did have oatmeal some of the breakfast, but guess what was on it? Raisins and almonds. Again, very calorically dense food. So my recommendation for her was that she change the raisins and almonds to a uh, mashed banana. Just take a whole banana, mash it in. Now you've got your, your natural sweetener in a much lower caloric density form. Um, she was eating a popcorn, a lot of popcorn as a snack. You know, she wasn't putting butter on it, but popcorn comes in at around 1800 calories per pound. So again, a very calorically dense food. And I know a lot of plant-based people who think that popcorn is a, you know, is a healthy snack. Um, so this gives you, uh, you know, it gives you a sense of just all the small subtle ways that people who are eating a hundred percent plant-based diet can still be faltering in terms of reaching their weight loss goals. Um, oh, one more thing, avocado. That's another big one. Um, you know, while a little bit might be okay, uh, people who are eating significant significant amounts of avocado, that is also um, preventing you from losing weight. Right, right. You know, what, Dr. Lim, what you said is so true. It's so interesting to, uh, because I hear it too. Sometimes I do the start solution workshops and even though I'm not a medical doctor, but uh, people ask me the same question that you were saying. And I, I follow this, I follow precisely what, what Dr. McDougall says in his book, et cetera, et cetera. But until you do the, the food log, right. it's, uh, it's so, it just opens your, your eyes because it is possible to have, to eat plant-based like you were saying earlier, but still eat highly caloric uh, foods. Um, and what you were saying, just having orange juice or hummus that is made with oil, and those are little, you know, uh, little things we think, but they do add up. Um, so thank yeah. you for, for pointing that out. That's really right. And so when I, you know, I think that Jeff has like six or seven top recommendations uh, when he's sort of taking these concepts and now how do I actually apply it? You know, and basically, as we wrap it up, number one, eat liberally from those four groups that fall below that 600 calorie per pound line. So, you know, green leafy vegetables, um, your your starches like your potatoes, your sweet potatoes, um, your corn, your your oatmeal. Um, eat. You know, recently we just had a, a, a patient at McDougall who brought teff, which is uh, Ethiopian grain that's used to make the Indera bread. And they, um, uh, they eat teff every morning uh, as their form of oatmeal. Great, wonderful. That's a whole grain, perfect. Um, uh, legumes uh, and, um, and fruits. You, know, you can eat liberally from those categories. And where you want to limit is the more calorically dense processed things, the breads. You know, I, I have a lot of people say, but it's sprouted Ezekiel bread, so I can eat as much of that as I want. Well, no. <laughs> um, so the breads, the crackers, the popcorn, um, uh, limit the sugar that you add, the avocado, um, the, the nuts and the seeds. Uh, and Two, two other things is sequence your meals. So if you're gonna, for lunch example, start off with your soup, your salad, um, and then move on to your main course because those, are, those tend to be lower in caloric density. Um, and then a, another concept is the idea of dilution. So if you take a pasta and you decrease the ratio of pasta and increase your ratio of steamed vegetables, you have just, um, lower the caloric density. Um, and then finally, don't drink your calories. Um, so uh, the, the, the patient I was mentioning this, earlier this morning, she was making smoothies uh, a lot, like on average three to five times a week. And by drinking your calories, you're actually not um, having, you're not quite reaching the same level of satiation. 
and so it's just not going to be as satisfying and fulfilling. So I do I recommend that people eat their their calories. Eat right. Their calories. A lot of people are into smoothies, and and I I don't personally I don't think that they are unhealthy. But like what you're saying, the satiation level is so much lower, right? Exactly. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I love smoothies. I make smoothies, uh, you know, a lot. My son, uh, basically, I put in a couple frozen bananas, frozen blueberries, some almond milk, and it's delicious. But I'm also not trying to lose weight. Right. I'm not trying to watch the weight of my son. So all these things I've mentioned, I don't want anyone watching this to walk away thinking that bread is evil, um, crackers are evil. You know, uh, air popped popcorn is a bad thing. Uh, you know, th that's not the message. The message is for people who come saying, I'm trying to lose weight and I'm not able right. to, then you want to look, am I eating too many of those types of foods? And if I am, maybe I should cut down. Okay. Not to say that everyone should now just give up those foods because I eat every food that I just mentioned. I eat, I eat nuts, I eat seeds. Um, I just had a ha handful of almonds earlier this morning. Uh, I, I, there's an amazing bakery on the way to Bodega Bay called Wildflower Bakery. <laughs> and I just, we stopped there this weekend. We got a whole loaf of their nut seed, um, bread and I ate like four pieces from it. So, you know, it was delicious, but some people, they would want to curtail their intake of those. Right, right. I think that making generalizations is is dangerous in every aspect of, of life. But all I mean here, because what works for one person doesn't for another. And like you were saying, some you don't need, you're not looking to lose more weight. Right. Uh, I know, for example, for example, AJ Chef AJ isn't either. So uh, it depends uh, what the goal is. Would you say that someone who comes to the ten day a program that is about to happen in a, in a couple of weeks there in Santa Rosa. Uh, someone who goes there and is eating the standard American diet and it's, uh, I don't know, 100, 150 pounds overweight, just dropping the, uh, the you know, the, the milk, the dairy, the, the meat, the, the processed foods, that would, for that person, that would probably allow them to, to lose weight and they are still maybe eating some bread and pasta. But after they lose those 100 pounds, because I went through the same thing, mm -hmm. then you have to go to another level and start taking away other types of foods. At least that's what happened to me. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Gustavo. And I've come to really appreciate that there, the uh, importance of understanding your patient in terms of what kind of advice you give. So I will say that I meet the people that are hardcore and they're willing, you just tell them what to do and they will follow it 100% starting the next minute. That's, they're not, right. they're not common, but they are those. For that person, I think it's a disservice to tell them anything less than everything, you know, cut out the meat, cut out the dairy, cut out the eggs, cut out the processed foods, um, you know, completely, you know, get rid of the, mm -hmm. the sugar. And, and if you want the most, the fastest, most rapid kind of weight loss. But I think the average person, it kind of comes in phases. And so, you know, starting off with, uh, and, and I think that's why Dr. McDougall and, and the McDougall program, there is a, a little bit of sugar. I mean, there is sugar on the table. You know, there's maple syrup with your pancakes. You can add salt to some of your food, uh, and and he recognizes that you know food has to taste good <laughs> and palatable for people to stick to it and maintain it. Um, and so, you know, first is just kind of if, if they internalize the primary concepts that are conveyed in in the McDougal program and starch-based eating. I mean, it just happens like clockwork they lose weight but then some people may still they may reach a plateau and they're having difficulty getting further and then for them uh that's when and and he wrote a whole book of on it i even have it let's see where where is it <laughs> <laughs> right, the google program for maximum weight loss right uh, you know i was looking at that 
that earlier. And, and so he, he does have that sort of more intense intervention uh, right. who, who are struggling. Yeah, and I, I, and I know that people, um, I've got several questions from people that ask the question, like they know that you work at, at True North and also with Dr. McDougall and they want you to compare both, but I think it's maybe unfair to do that because I think that with Dr. McDougall, like you're saying, uh, it's a way to get to the first step when someone comes and is eating just a horrible diet. And if you tell them to cut out everything, you know, some people may do it and some not, uh, but allowing a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, some flour will get the, the food in the door. It, it's, do you think that's the purpose, one of the purpose of why Dr. McDougall allows these types of uh, foods, like a little bit of sugar and salt and things like that? Yeah, he, he wants the food to taste good, to be palatable uh, for, for um, patients, not to just come those 10 days, eat a certain way, and then as soon as they leave, uh, go back to their, you know, go back to their old ways. And so I think he, he appreciates that for sustainability. Um, these little condiments can make a big difference. Right. Now, in terms of, I don't think he would mind me sharing because I think it's humorous. <laughs> He's a, he, he will tell patients like, or that, you know, if you fail this program, then, then I'm sending you to True North. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, you know, True North is a, is a is a stricter diet. It's no salt, no oil, no sugar, and um, I I think there is a place for that. I do think that you know both programs, 90, 90 plus percent are in agreement, and there's subtle uh, subtle differences that are actually complementary and reach different uh, patient segments or subgroups. Um, uh, just as an example, and I'm actually going to speak. I'm uh, speaking at the Advanced Study Weekend coming up in September, uh, along with uh, Dr. McDougall's son, Craig McDougall, um, uh, Matt Letterman, Alana Polvid. So he's having the, the, yes. the younger generation. Uh, <laughs> the ones who have to take over. <laughs> that's, the, that's the theme. It, it should be a lot of fun. Um, it should be. My dad's actually coming as well. He. I heard, yes. Well, I plan to be there too, so I'm, I'm looking Great. forward to it. It'll be good. But uh, I'm going to talk about sugar. That's one of the things I'm going to. Um, that's my. That's my topic. Sugar, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> yeah. And you know, True North is is no sugar, right? Right. And I have seen that for certain patients, that is a very critical intervention mm -hmm. um, because they have. I'm just going to say the word, they may have an addiction to sugar. In other words, they cannot control their intake. Um, they, if, they, uh, if they cut it out of their diet completely, they go through feelings of withdrawal. Um, and so for that, for that individual, having a zero sugar policy might be healthier for them. Right, right. So I really do see the two programs as complementary. Uh, and they, they work together. And I've, I've actually seen patients at both. I've seen patients who have gone to the McDougal program, come to True North, vice versa, and have gotten different things out of each of them. Right, right. I, I, I really wanted to, to do an experiment myself. And so after three years of, of doing, uh, uh, being very strict with McDougal, uh, I met you over there at True North a, a month ago or so. I decided to go there and see how easy it was going to be to give up salt, sugar, and flour. And to my surprise, it was easy to give up sugar and flour, but salt wasn't that easy. <laughs> 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 so I have to admit that I use a little, I mean, nothing, almost nothing, but I still use some, and I, uh, it's, it's hard for me, so. That's funny, Gustavo. Uh, I'm, I agree with you. I, I, I don't have trouble getting rid of added sugar. I think because fruit is so delicious. Right, exactly. You can, you can use the entire fruit as a, like I, when I eat at True North, I eat the oatmeal that's completely plain. And then I, I was debating making a plate just to show you what I eat here. It's, <laughs> it's gorgeous, but it's a half a bowl of oatmeal. 
and half a bowl of fruit and I eat it together. And so the fruit totally uh, provides all the sweetness, but the salt mm -hmm. is, that's tough. <laughs> yes, that, there were some meals that I just um, I just couldn't eat. Uh, it, it, I, it was very difficult, but uh, anyway, it, it does make a, a difference. I think it's it's a, a true north is is a place where a lot of people will find uh, the solution as a complement to to Dr. McDougall's program. How have uh, you done since leaving True North in terms of cutting out all the sugar? Have you continued with that? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I have no like. I mean, you know, your taste buds change. So I mean, fruit to me tastes so sweet now that it takes care of my sugar <laughs> cravings. Right. Yeah. Uh, the only time that I can't uh, do it is if I drink tea. Let's say I I, I have a hard time uh, drinking it without sugar. But um, uh, Chef AJ came up with an idea. Says soak some. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you mentioned it earlier, uh, the fruit, uh, some from fruit and water, and use the water for sweetening. Okay. Uh, but yep. anyway, it's uh, it's very very interesting. We do have more questions here for you. If you don't, w would you be able? To, would you be yeah. okay answering maybe a couple of questions here that people have submitted? Uh, there's one question that comes up very often, and it is. Uh, won't eating starch, starch, uh, starchy vegetables raise my insulin levels, then signal my body to store fat. I am so very, very confused on what is healthy for me to eat as I am pre-diabetic and have insulin resistance. I need to help, uh, I says, uh, sorry, he says, I need help and good fact-based information. Everyone seems to have different facts and science based info that just makes my head spin <laughs> no that's a really good question and i think the critical concept to understand about insulin resistance is that the underlying mechanism behind it is the what are called the intramyocellular lipids which is fancy way of saying the fat inside your cells so by you not eating starches, may you temporarily have lower blood glucose? Sure, but that's not really getting to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is the fat inside the cell. So what you, what you need to cut out is the fat in the diet. Uh, as you cut out the fat in the diet, then your intramyocellular lipids, they, they decrease. Your insulin resistance improves. And so you can eat things, you know, you can eat potatoes, you can eat fruit, and your body is processing it appropriately. And that's the reason why when patients come to the McDougal program on day one, uh, we will often take them off of their oral diabetic medications or cut their insulin doses down significantly because within a few days, they're on lower doses of medication with better blood glucose readings because their insulin resistance is improving. They've They've cut out the animal, the dairy, these high sources of, of saturated and total fat. Um, and even though they're getting lots of carbs in the form of starches, now their body can process it appropriately. So I, I, I kind of like this image. Dr. Ornish, for those of you who have seen, he, he always starts his talks off with oftentimes with a cartoon. And it's this cartoon of two doctors mopping up the floor full of water while the sink in the background is on full blast and continuing to pour water. So, you know, uh, it, trying to decrease fruit and potatoes and all, that's just kind of, that's mopping up the floor. It's not, it's not addressing the root cause. Uh, you know, the problem is not the potatoes, it's not the fruit, uh, it's not the legumes. The problem is the fat inside the cell that's causing the insulin resistance. Right, right. So to, so to answer that that person's question, he he can absolutely eat potatoes and fruit, but he really has to follow the other parts of the McDougal plan, which would be to cut out the oil and the meat and the dairy. Right, right. Very good. Here we have someone asking: uh, visceral fat seems to be more most difficult to eliminate. 
are uh, there any foods or dietary interventions that target uh, I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm pronouncing the word is it visceral fat or yeah okay yeah I, I learned a new term I was reading <laughs> gosh where was I reading it um, I can't remember but it's called tofi thin on the outside and fat on the inside thin <laughs> outside fat inside tofi yeah, right. <laughs> And that's essentially what this patient is, or this, or sorry, this person is alluding to, that you can have a lot of visceral fat that surrounds the organs that's not necessarily visible on the outside. And honestly, the intervention is no different than, uh, at least to my knowledge, the intervention is no different than what you would recommend for someone who is fat on the outside and fat on the inside, which is basically eating a plant-based, low-oil, starch-based diet. You know that it, the same uh, fat um, uh, deposition or getting uh, sorry getting rid of the fat will happen uh, both ways. Right, right, Doctor uh, Lim. People are asking because I think I, I said something a few minutes ago about two weeks from now, but I just want to clarify that in about two weeks, actually, everybody, it's August nineteenth through the twenty eighth. That's uh, one of the several times a year that Dr. McDougall does his 10-day live-in program where you go uh, and to Santa Rosa, California to this beautiful resort and you spend 10 days there. And that's where, uh, if I'm correct, Dr. Lim, Lim uh, you take care of patients now. And right. of course, Dr. McDougall, I think he still uh, continues with you or for at least part of the time. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> So, correct, the, there is a 10-day program coming up. Um, I believe it starts the 19th, as you said. Right. Uh, and uh, Dr. McDougall and I will both be taking care of you. Um, he, ten he will usually be there for the initial visit um, and uh, the follow-up visits I will do. Um, but he is always there uh, sort of as for people who want to have a, a extra consultation or just a question. Um, he's really focusing a lot of his attention on the lecturing uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm helping out with some of the clinical responsibility. Right, right. And people can go to drmcdougall.com, which I'm putting here on the screen now, uh, the website, and you can sign up there and go. It is truly life-changing. It's what I did three years ago, and and uh, you get to, you know, you have Dr. Lim, Dr. McDougall, who take care of you with all your medical needs, all the food is provided, all the lectures. So when you leave there, you really feel empowered. You feel like I know what to do. I know how to do it. I know when to do it. And it's just a wonderful feeling. So I do recommend everybody to go. And now that we have you, <laughs> Dr. Lim, uh, it's, it's really exciting to see the new generation. <laughs> yeah. Sounds yeah, like yeah. Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I, it really is an amazing program. And what I appreciate is, you know, Dr. McDougall, he's, he's mentioned, there's nothing that you get in the 10 day program that you cannot get knowledge wise for free on his website. Uh, that's the beauty of the website, right? He has, uh, he and Mary McDougall have generously made available the lectures, all his newsletters, you don't have to pay a thing, there's no subscription fee. So all the knowledge is right, right on your computer. But what makes the 10 day program so powerful is that you're engaging in it with a community of people who are all like-minded and trying to achieve the same thing. And um, you know, there's something about seeing these presentations live. Uh, of course, there's the medical care that you get uh, and then it's nice just to not have to worry about meals and just be able to eat the, the delicious meals that are provided. So it's this, it's the, it's the experience, the collective experience that makes it different. But for those of you who are, it's too far or, or, or you're not able to afford it, the knowledge is all there uh, online. It is. It is not only there, uh, it's actually listed the free McDougall program and um, you have all the videos, the lectures, the, all the recipes and now every week we're doing this webinar so that people can stay connected. So there is uh, a wonderful way to, to start the program. We want to thank you Dr. Lim for making the time. I know you're 
days are packed, busy, and thank you for uh, taking the time today. Thank you so much. I had a, I had a lot of fun, Gustavo. You take care. Hopefully, we will see you sometime in the near future, and we can continue our conversations. And um, until then, I hope to see you in September during the advanced study weekend. OK, looking forward to it. OK. All right. Take Very care. good. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you next week with Dr. McDougall. Bye-bye.